2024 question number six. Let's take a look at that. Suppose a random variable X follows an exponential distribution. Now X following an exponential distribution with a parameter lambda, lambda e to the power minus lambda X. If I remember the cumulative distribution function, it's one minus e to the power of minus lambda X. Okay, so basically probability X less than equal to X is one minus e to the power minus lambda X. And probability x greater than x will therefore be 1 minus probability x less than equal to x, which is basically e to the power of minus lambda x. Okay, this will come in handy. That's why I'm doing this. Now, we need to find out exponential distribution mean 50. Now, the mean of an exponential distribution is 1 by lambda. So, the expectation lambda is equal to 1 by 50. Okay. Now, if that is settled, we need to find out the conditional probability. Let's use a different color. Now, probability x greater than 70 given x is greater than 60. Do it in the usual way, 70 intersection x greater than 60. Now, x greater than 70 and x greater than 60 would simply mean that x is greater than 70 divided by probability x is greater than 60. Now, x is greater than 70. Use this x greater than x e to the power of minus lambda into 70 divided by e to the power of minus lambda into 60. So, e to the power of minus lambda into 70 minus 60. That is e to the power of minus lambda into 10, which is e to the power of minus lambda is 1 by 50 into 10. So, that's e to the power of minus 1 by 5. Minus 1 by 5 is the answer. I think it's option C. Okay. E to the power of minus 1 by 5. You had to know the exponential distribution end to end in order to answer this. It's a good question. Jam 2024, question number 7. Which of the following measures was not initiated by the government of India as part of the economic reforms in 1991? So in 1991, if you take a look at option A, uh, the new industrial policy of 1991 was indeed introduced, which included uh, measures uh, such as uh, liberalization, uh, privatization, globalization. All of this was introduced in the industrial policy of 1991. So globalization and opening up of the Indian economy uh, uh, began as a part of the reforms. Okay, so option A is not the answer because this was indeed initiated. Okay, let's take a look at the other options. So full convertibility of rupee on capital account. This was not part of the 1991 reforms. Partial convertibility of the rupee on the current account was introduced. Full convertibility on the capital account has not been implemented even today. Okay, so this is the correct answer to the question. So this is not the answer. The answer nahi hai. Okay. Like this is the answer. This was not initiated. Removal of quantitative restrictions. Now removal of quantitative uh, restrictions was introduced as part of the uh, liberalization. Many quantitative uh, restrictions on imports were removed. So this was introduced and hence not the answer. Okay. And last, guidelines for investment by foreign industry, foreign institutional investors in the capital market. Now, what were the guidelines? The guidelines for investment by FIIs in the capital market was as part of the opening up reforms of the Indian economy. Okay, so the entry of the FIIs into the capital market was also introduced in 1991. So that was also introduced. So not initiated by the government of india it's full convertibility aaj bhi full convertibility of the rupee in the capital account nahi hai partial convertibility hai that was introduced in 1991 itself okay so seven answer is b iit jam 2024 question number 8 nominal gdp is 1000 p into v p into y is 1000 money supply is 250 Based on the QTM, quantity theory of money, the velocity of money equals to. So this is a simple question. The QTM equation tells us MV is equal to PY. M is 250. V is what we need to find out. And PY is 1000. Because this is the nominal money supply. So it's price multiplied by the real uh, GDP. 
So V would be 1000 divided by 250, which would be equal to four. And that is option B. IIT Jam 2024, question number nine. S1 is the set where X plus Y is greater than or equal to one. X plus Y is less than or equal to two. Y greater than or equal to X square. X Y greater than or equal to zero. And S2 is X Y such that X plus Y is greater than or equal to one. X plus Y is less than or equal to two. Y less than or equal to X square. Okay. So the lines are same and these two are differing. Okay. So if we look at the graph, a rough graph, if we look at the line x plus y equals to 1, so this is going to be 1, this is going to be 1. And if we look at the line x plus y equals to 2, so this is going to be 2 and this is going to be 2. So we are above x plus y greater than or equal to 1 and below x plus y less than or equal to 2 in both the cases. So in both the cases, we have to be shading the region between these two lines because we are below this line and above this line. So let us look at set one first. So in set one, what is going to happen? We have y equals to x square. So first of all, let us make the parabola. y equals to x square, something like this. This is y equals to x square. So if you want to know what is y greater than or equal to x square, so if you look at this point, 0, 1, so, so 0 greater than, so here y is 1. So 1 is greater than or equal to 0 square. It is true. So y greater than or x square is going to be region above this blue line. So the common region S1 is this. Okay. So we have got the region S1. Now, is this convex? Yes, because if you join any two points on this region, they will lie inside this set only. You join any two points, they will not, not go outside the set. Okay. So S1 is convex. So this goes out, this goes out. So now let us look at the other option. So for the other option, we will be having this pink region. So because the pink region is the one where y is less than or equal to x square. So for S2, so the pink one is S2 and the blue one is S1. Now is the pink region convex or not? Okay, so if you, okay, if you choose this point and this point, okay, on S2, and you look at this line, which is joining these two points, this line will be above this pink region. So this is not going to be the convex set because a situation like this is happening. Okay, we take a point here, we take a point here on S2, but this line is above S2 because S2 is lying below this. Okay, so S2 is not convex. So option number B is the correct answer. IIT Jam 2024, question number 10. We have to find out the limit of x tending to infinity, 1 plus 1 by x whole power x. Okay. So let y be 1 plus 1 upon x whole power x. Take log on both sides, natural log. So we will have natural log on both sides. Now, use the power rule of logarithms. The power rule of logarithms says log of a power b is b log of a. So therefore, the right-hand side will become x log 1 plus 1 upon x. And we can write it as log 1 plus 1 by x divided by 1 by x. Okay. Now we take limit x tending to infinity on both the sides. Okay. Now as x tends to infinity, what happens? As x tends to infinity, 1 by x tends to 0 and 1 plus 1 by x tends to 1 and therefore log of 1 plus 1 by x tends to log of 1 which is 0. So therefore we will get 0 by 0 form on the right hand side. So whenever we will have a 0 by 0 form, so we will be using L'Hopital rule. What is L'Hopital rule? We will differentiate the numerator and the denominator separately. So the differentiation of the numerator is differentiation of log of 1 plus 1 by x is 1 upon 1 plus 1 by x. And then we apply chain rule. Differentiation of 1 plus 1 by x is 0 minus 1 upon x square. Now differentiation of 1 upon x is minus 1 upon x square. So this and this will get cancelled out. 
Now on the left hand side, log is a continuous function, and whenever we have a continuous function, it can be taken out of the limit sign. Okay, so this is limit x tending to infinity, one upon one plus x. Now you put limit on the right hand side, so this is going to be one because one by x goes to zero. So now what is natural log? It is with respect to base e. So limit x tending to y would be e raised to the power one, which is e, and which is a uh, limit x tending to infinity, one plus one by x whole power x, which is e. So option number A is the correct answer. Moreover, it is a standard result. It can be learned that this limit is always equal to e.